Welcome back to some of you. How many of you are here for the first time in, say, about six months? Okay, we've got a few hands. Welcome back. Yeah. So we've been working really hard over the last many months to keep you safe, as safe as we can. So we ask that you keep your masks on. Um, and for communion, we will come to you. So those of you who are new back, we will come to you. You can stay right in your spots. Uh, we're trying to seat people distanced, so each family should be two benches. We're blessed here, because you know when all this happened, we found out that two benches equals six feet. Whew. So <laughs> isn't that easy? Two benches between each family, and we know we're good. So that's just how we do it. When, now that you're back to Mass, you can see that. And of course, we've asked the sanitizer. So uh, anything you'd like to bring with you today? Any, um, any visitors visiting us today that I can welcome? Any, yes, where are you from? <laughs> well, welcome. <laughs> Did you request the rain for your move tomorrow? No, no, okay. <laughs> Sounds good, we'll work on that, we'll work on that. Well, welcome to the area. <laughs> Uh, any birthdays or anniversaries anybody would like to announce? Just where's Sister Joanne? Sister Joanne had a birthday. There she is. I'm going to point out Sister Joanne because she had a birthday on Wednesday. <laughs> any other celebrations? Don't want to miss anybody. Okay, well then let us worship together on this 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. I first heard our opening song today as a child in grade school in the 1960s, during a time of war protests and civil rights marches. The song got us through the 60s into a better place. The same today with the same spirit, hoping that it brings us into a better place as a people of God. Please rise. the community, 
holy, holy stuff in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, communion of the Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let's set aside our failings. They get in the way of the Holy Spirit. Please. Lord Jesus, you welcome sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you offer salvation for the repentant. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Yes, may God have mercy on all of us. Forgive us our sins and failings of every sort and bring us as individuals and as a community to everlasting life. Amen. Please let us pray. All love be to you, dear God. Thank you for gathering us together again. We know that it is by your grace that we are redeemed and accepted as your sons and daughters. Look upon us as your sons and daughters and help us to be faithful to you. This we pray through Jesus, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Spirit. One God, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. So, you, O mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but you will have saved your life. The word of God.
saves us. Let us come now before our God with songs. Let us hail the Lord. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe no one anything except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. The word of God. Thanks be to God.
Gospel according to Matthew. My mind, my lips, and my heart. Jesus spoke to his disciples. If your brother or sister sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the brother or sister listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you were not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the brother or sister refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Anybody know what this is? Tape, but what kind of tape? I've heard it referred to as hainter's tape. It allows you to make very straight lines. Blue tape. It's also white. I've heard seen painter's tape, it's white. So using this tape, I'm going to attempt to offer to you a metaphor for some in today's world. One line. No, it's not six feet. <laughs> A second line. Here is the metaphor I call attention to today, given the readings we have and the single word focus of those readings. I think you'll agree. For many in today's world, we draw lines. We stand on one side of the line. We look to the other on the other side of the other line and say, I'm right and you're wrong. And the response from the other is, no, I'm right, and you're wrong. There doesn't seem to be any attempt to get to the middle ground. I bring this up because the one word focus for today's readings, very clearly delineated in Ezekiel and Matthew, is reconciliation. It's forgiveness. Many are quick to 
are not quick to reconcile any differences. Many have no desire to dialogue. Many are not quick to offer forgiveness. It's ugly, isn't it? It's not true just in our time. It's been true in the course of human history. Here's an example I want to show you. You know I'm prone to use video to make examples because I think it's pretty powerful stuff. This is an example from the movie Lincoln, and it is the playing out of an actual transcript from a dialogue that took place in the 1860s during the time of Lincoln between two individuals on the floor of one of the houses of Congress. Ugly stuff. How can I hold that all men are created equal when here before me stands speaking the moral carcass of the gentleman from Ohio, proof that some men are inferior, endowed by their maker with dim wits, impermeable to reason, with cold, pallid slime in their veins instead of hot red blood. You are more reptile than man, George. So low and fat that the foot of man is incapable of crushing you. How dare you? I'm right, and you're wrong. Doesn't seem to be much willingness to dialogue there, does there? I bring this all up because of today's scripture. In Ezekiel, we hear some harsh words. We hear the prophet Ezekiel instructed by God to bring to the Jewish people this directive. That if we see another who is not doing God-like things, is not acting in God-like ways, we are to go to them and tell them that they're not acting as they should. And, the harsh words continue, if we choose to not go to them and point it out, that would be hard, wouldn't it? If we choose to not go to them, we will be treated as severely in judgment by God as the one who is doing ungodly things. Now, God hasn't changed since the Old Testament, but in the Old Testament, man has changed. And what was true more then is that those who wrote the scripture tended to portray God as vengeful and harsh. God has not changed. It's man's awareness of God that's changed. Then in the gospel, it's a totally different tone. So that Ezekiel reading is about reconciliation. It's about pointing out to the other, you need to be reconciled to God, and you're not right now. In the gospel, Jesus offers this beautiful, very deliberate sequence of four times addressing someone who has done you this service. Go to them. Speak to them honestly and openly. If you gain their acceptance, you're done. You've regained that person, as the gospel says. If they don't listen to you and you don't reconcile, bring another one or two with you so that there can be witnesses to the discussion. So you repeat. You don't give up. If that doesn't work, you go a third time with more people and you attempt to reconcile. And if that doesn't work, you don't give up, then you bring it to a larger body. In this case, they reference the church. What's the theme in that? It's don't give up. Don't give up in terms of either asking for or offering forgiveness. In that metaphor, I believe Jesus is inviting us here into the middle ground. The middle ground is called reconciliation. Another name for that is right relationship. What did Paul say in the second reading today from Romans? Paul says the words today, but he says them because he heard them from Christ originally in Christ's great commandment. And Paul says to us today, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
That's reconciliation. That's right relationship. The full commandment from Christ is love God and love your neighbor, and while you're at it, love yourself as well. There's a repeat again in Christ's statement that we should dialogue, listen, compromise, and repeat as often as necessary. I'm going to offer you now in video another contemporary example. And like the first one, I chose to use 150 years ago because it was two politicians. And I've learned that when we bring that word up, it tends to bring a visceral response. Well, here's two more. But it's, to me, an example of the power of reconciliation. Here are two people who were at battle with each other, at least verbally. Natural disaster. You'll get the point of the power of coming together in the middle ground. Best, we hear and heed the cries of others. When confronted with massive human suffering, Americans have always stepped up and answered the call to help. But there's never been anything on the scale of human tragedy in our own hemisphere like what we're now witnessing in Haiti. Today, President Clinton and I are joining together to appeal to you with real urgency. Give now, and lives will be saved. Thank you. Thank you. Bishop Dolan presented me with the Book of Gospel, along with my brother Deacons, and said, as he handed it to each of us individually, Believe what you read, teach what you believe, practice what you teach. In regards to reconciliation, I'm going to attempt to practice what I preach. I stand here on one side of the line looking at you on the other. And I say to you that I know who I know that I've hurt. That I've offended. And I'm sorry. I'm deeply sorry. I admit it. And I ask for your forgiveness. This second reading from Paul, this notion of loving neighbor as the ultimate act of reconciliation, I continue my confession to you with a closing statement. Not only do I ask for forgiveness, not only am I sorry, I love you. I love you. Deep in my heart, I love you. And I'm sorry. And I'd ask that we both together look at what Christ taught us today, is that if that were to happen again, I pray it doesn't. Part of reconciliation is committing to not do it again, but we're also human. That we will be willing to do what Christ says. Let's go to one another and talk about it and dialogue. Not say you're wrong and I'm right. Let's try and come to the middle ground. If it doesn't work the first time, depending on what the situation was, let's bring another one or two, a smaller group, and then let's... Let's keep doing that until we're reconciled. So my sisters and brothers, we're being invited today by Christ here, the middle ground, to compromise, to dialogue, to come together, to reconcile. And if we reconcile with each other, we're going to reconcile with God. I've always looked at Christ's greatest commandment as three pieces of a formula. Love God, love neighbor, love self. Turn that around. You've got to love yourself before you can love your neighbor. And when you learn to love yourself and your neighbor, then you can truly love God. I love you, and I'm sorry if when I've hurt you. I'll leave the tape maybe to remind us as we proceed with Mass.
Uh, Sandy, thank you very much. The ancient, ancient creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the scripture. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Church, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let's add a few intentions, a few prepared intentions, and then a few from the community. Please. We pray first for our church that he may be a voice in the world calling all to just reconciliation. We pray for reconciliation within our church, between Christian denominations, between all faith traditions, among all people. For the local and universal church, we pray. Christ offers a profound and holy process in today's gospel regarding how to seek respectful and just reconciliation. May all government, business, community, and family leaders engage in respectful dialogues and be more concerned about just outcomes than personal gains. We pray in a special way for reconciliation in Kenosha. For peace on earth, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Labor Day weekend, we pray for the right to work, for fair and just wages, and for jobs to all who wish to work. For all workers, we're all frontline workers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. The poor and the outcast have suffered greatly at the hands of social sin, structures and prejudices that impose undue and unfair hardships on the powerless. We pray that the cycles of poverty, inequality, and injustice be broken. For the poor, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Some from our faith community cannot be with us today due to illness or other hardship. We pray for their physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. We pray also that we take the time needed to care for them, that we go to them. For the sick, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the re recently departed, remembering Rosalia Kowinski. We also pray for all who mourn. At this Mass, we offer intention as we memorialize Michael Rheingans. May these and all the faithful departed rest in peace. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Other prayers that we wish to offer to God of thanksgiving, praise, forgiveness, or petition. Please lift your hand and your prayer now. For the unborn. For the unborn, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. I'll come back to this group. Sister. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Bev. In praise and thanks to God for the newborn, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. I'll come around one more time. Any other prayers you would wish to offer? Oh, there we go. Thank you for the need for rain for children, especially for the need for God's Beautiful. People who need to learn how to forgive and people who need to know how to ask for forgiveness, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. You should have gave him the homily. It was much shorter. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, yes, please. For her nephew and anybody who has contracted coronavirus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And as always, God, we know there are many in the world today who have no one to pray for them. And we know there are many others who don't pray. We pray for them. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, these are a few of our needs. Help us and help us to be receptive of your advances. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Liturgy of the Eucharist, please. we pray together that these gifts will be acceptable to God, our almighty creator. May the Lord Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our our good and the good of all this holy church. O God, who give us the gifts of prayer and peace, graciously grant us new blessings through these offerings and these prayers offered with full heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Oh, yes, indeed. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Please let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and it is just. And it is our duty and it is salvation itself, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world You have arranged the changing of the times and seasons. It is you who formed human beings in your own image and set the human family over the entire world and all of its wonder. 
thus to rule in your name all that you have made and forever to praise you in your works and to do so through Jesus. And so, and gladly, we join our voices to the choruses of heaven as together we sing. of holiness, you know this, and we know this. Therefore, it is with confidence that we beg you to make holy these our gifts this evening. Send down your Holy Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus. Oh, we remember the Lord on the evening before he died. He at table with his dearest, where he was betrayed, and that was the beginning of his passion, but he continued on, and, near, and at a certain point in the meal, Jesus took the bread in hands, and he gave thanks to you. And then he broke the bread, and he gave it to the disciples, and he said to them, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. Do so, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. The meal continued along, and near the end, in a similar manner, Jesus took the cup in hand, he praised you again. He thanked you some more. And then he offered the cup to the disciples. And this time he said, now take this, all of you, and you drink from it. You drink, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new eternal covenant, the blood which will be shed soon now for you, for many, for everyone, really, for the forgiveness of sins. Then Jesus added this. He said, do this in memory of me. Behold this great mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, loving Lord, as we celebrate again this afternoon this memorial of Jesus' dying and rising, we offer you and you the bread of life, the cup of salvation as well, and we give thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister like this. We pray and we pray very humbly that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, may we increasingly be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church is everywhere on the planet now. Bring each of us and all of us to the fullness of charity. Bless in a special way the Bishop of Rome, our dear Pope Francis. Bless our bishops, Jerome and Jeffrey and James. Let's pray for those who served us before them, Pope Benedict in the Vatican, Archbishop Weakland and Bishop Skelton, now senior bishops. We pray for our Pastor Sandy, and we pray for everyone who's pitching in in any way. Oh, you know how we pray for those who have died. Lord, remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. All who have died in your mercy, you welcome them into the light of your presence. Lord, in short, have mercy on all of us. We pray so that with Mary and Joseph, and with the apostles and the martyrs and with the choruses and choruses of saints. We pray that we also may merit to be heirs to heavenly life someday, and there with them, 
praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus. Through him, with him, in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor be yours forever and ever. Through the centuries, the Eucharist, the Mass, has taken forms that vary. Things were added and then they were dropped and this and that was changed. But one thing it seems that's always been in the Eucharist at this point and I think always will be, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. A prayer for peace. Lord Jesus, it is with good reason that you are called Prince of Peace. You know we stand in need of your peace at all times. Peace in our homes, in our neighborhoods, and in our country, and in our world, in our relationships, large and small. Grant us peace, Lord, and grant us unity according to your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Aware of our own and each other's health, let us offer each other a sign of peace in a way we consider appropriate. Peace be with you. Yes, indeed. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we, every single one of us invited again this afternoon to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
we have one announcement from the Archbishop. On Monday, September 14th, 2020, the dispensation from the obligation to attend Sunday Mass and Holy Days of Obligation will expire. And it will be the responsibility of those who are capable and not prohibited by other circumstances to attend Sunday Mass. See the bulletin for more details. I do want to expand on that a bit because there's been a lot of confusion. Um, two of us on the altar, uh, the old priest and deacon, would be able to self-dispense because we are an at-risk age during the pandemic. So seniors uh, would be automatically allowed to not attend. We'd love to have people attend. The Archbishop in the full letter goes on to explain that it's a matter of conscience and that we as Catholics are required to have an informed conscience. So there are, there are many areas where we can, for good reason, sickness, taking care of another, etc., make a good and moral decision to not attend, knowing, of co course, as exactly as Mark read, that if it is possible, you are expected, in fact, to be at Mass. So uh, it doesn't sound quite as absolute as it was announced. Check out the full article by the Archbishop, and I think you'll see what it is I'm referring to. Loving God, your holy word today offers us a substantial challenge, but of course the holy table gives us substantial strength and wisdom for carrying out your loving plan, to say nothing of being gathered in a community of people that care about one another. Help us to go forward strengthened in love and goodness. This we pray at the closing of our liturgy, dear God, and you know we pray it as always. We pray it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and bless every single one of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go now in peace, forgiving infinitely as we love and serve the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. Oh.
yes, God bless America and every nation.